Good day, students. Welcome to part two um, of tab integration by parts. In this installment, I'll be um, using the tableau integration for much more advanced integrals. So let's take a look at um, the example we're to evaluate. The number one we're to evaluate the integral e of e to the x sine x dx. So let's make it sine 2x. e to the x sine 2x dx. All right. Now in most textbooks, um, this integral, integrals of this nature are evaluated using um, multiple integration by parts. But um, advanced tableau integration can be used here as a method I developed to really simplify the process. Okay. Now let's go ahead and take a look at um, our selection of u and um, dv. All right. So using tableau integration, we need u and dv. So what is our u going to be here? So in order to select u, we always use the Lipet rule for our selection. Lipet rule. We know what this means. L is for log logarithmic function, I is for inverse trig, P is for polynomial function, um, E is for exponential function, and T is for trigonometric function, okay? So I'm um, going from L to T, just like your order of operations, whichever function shows up first in your um, integrand, that is the function that will be selected as u, okay? So we have an exponential function and a trigonometric function here. So our u is going to be an exponential function since it runs higher using our log path rule, okay? So we're going to have um, e to the x as u and then dv is automatically sine to x. All right, now um, Whenever we're integrating using tableau integration with um, functions of a, form, of, the, of a form, x to the n times a trig or exponential function, or polynomial and a trig or exponential function, we can clearly see that by repeated differentiation, the u eventually becomes zero. In this case, this e to the x will never become zero, no matter how many times you differentiate it. All right, so the question is, how do you know when to stop? You will stop when you integrate this until you end up with a sine function. We're going to take full advantage of the cyclical nature of the integral of sine x. If you integrate it um, twice, you end up with cosine and then you end up back with sine. So we integrate this until this function shows up again. All right? Now, um, let's go ahead and differentiate this. If you differentiate e to the x, you end up with e to the x. Um, integrate this, the antiderivative of sine x is cosine 2x over 2. Now the question is, is it going to be a minus here or a plus? So the easy way to answer this is ask yourself, if I differentiate cosine, does the sine change? The answer is yes. The derivative of cosine is negative sine, so to, com to compensate for that switch in sine, you must introduce a negative here. Okay, now let's uh, ask ourselves, are we done or should we continue integrating? Um, we are not done yet because we don't have a sign in the, on the right column, on the dv column. So let's differentiate this again. It's going to be e to the x. And then if you integrate this, you're going to have sine 2x. And then using the reverse of the chain rule, we're going to have the 2 at the bottom, but there was a 2 here before. So we multiply the 2 by this 2, we end up with 4. Is it a minus or a plus? Now I ask yourself if we differentiate sine, is there a sign change? The answer is no, so that negative stays. Okay? Are we done integrating and differentiating? The answer is yes, because sine has showed up here again. Okay? So we're going to stop here. Now, as we do the standard tabular integration, um, we're going to go using the diagonals. This is u, and this is v. This is u, and this is v. 
And then we have our sign change happening. This is plus. The U, first UV is positive, right? The, the next UV is going to be negative because of the negative that um, shows up in the second part of the integration five parts formula. All right? And then we're going to group this last row together like this. Now, this minus right here applies to UV and the integral that remains. So there's going to be a minus here, and there's also going to be a minus that must be um, distributed to the remaining um, integral com uh, component. All right? Now, to help you understand how I'm going to create my integral using this expression, let's take a minute and look at the integration by parts formula. The integration by parts formula is the integral of u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. Okay? So that's integration by parts formula. Now what if we do this repeatedly? Let's say we do it twice. How does that look? How do the signs behave? So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so I'm going to show you a real short derivation as to how we're going to interpret this result we have right here. So what if we call it integral of u1 dv1? If we do that, it's going to become u1 v1 minus the integral of v1 du1. Now what if I integrate this again, but I end up with an integration by parts formula, so we can write that as u1 v1 minus uh, back head. Um, u2 v2 minus the integral of v2 du2. All right. So let's see how the sign change happens here. Um, you notice that my first pair u1 v1 is going to be positive. Okay. And then u2, v2 is going to be negative. You see this minus here? So this minus right here applies to u2. This is u2, and this is v2. Okay? And then if you notice, this minus is going to be distributed to... Um, this same minus we are talking about here is going to be distributed to negative the integral of v2, the u2. So this last row right here can be viewed as v2, the u2. Okay? Remember, this is u2 and this is du2. So this last row, you also have to have this minus distributed to it. Okay? So that's why we have the sign change happening. Because this minus basically causes the sign of u, uh, of um, our new u2, our new uvs to alternate. Okay? All right. So that's the reason why we have this pattern going on here. So how do I interpret this um matrix I just came up with here. So let's go ahead and interpret that. So we're going to have the integral, the original problem, of e to the x sine 2x dx equals the first pair, u1, v1, think about it that way, is going to be negative e to the x cosine 2x over 2. All right, so that's the first set. Now this uh, minus, you can think about, if I multiply the minuses, just result the sign minus, times this minus is going to make it a plus, plus e to the x sine 2x over 4. Now think about this, this is our minus u to v2, okay? And then lastly, um, we're going to have... Um, this minus times that minus times the integral of v2 to the u2. So this minus right here um, is this minus over here. And then this minus as a result of the integration by parts formula is this minus that we introduced. All right, so we're going to multiply this minus. Let me circle them. We're going to multiply this minus right here. This minus because of the formula. And then this minus because our du2 is negative as a result of integrating um, U, U1, okay, of, integ of the integrating um, V1, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and write that down. So what is that going to look like? 
is simply minus times minus times minus, which makes it minus um, the integral of e to the x sine 2x over 4. Okay? So there you have it. Now, um, how do we finish this up? These two integrals are similar. You, know, you can view them as like terms, so I'm going to combine this integral with this integral right here. How do we do that? I'll add. Um, another way I can write this integral is as one fourth of the integral of e to the x sine 2x dx. Okay, so put the dx here. All right, now um, one thing I just wanted to go over before I continue is that the terms without the integrals are the diagonal readings of my table right here. But if you go in a horizontal fashion, it's not a complete integral yet. So this horizontal piece right here is the last component of our tabular integration. So when you go horizontally, you have to include the integral of the first term times the second term. All right, so that's why it looks the way it looks here. Okay, so now um, I'm going to add uh, one fourth of this integral to both sides. One fourth of the integral of e to the x sine two x to both sides. Now, in my, what is the coefficient here? The coefficient here is one, and one can be written as four over four, right? So now we're going to combine these two integrals. To combine them is simply adding the coefficients, all right? So let's go ahead and combine it, both sides of our equation. On the left side, we're going to have uh, 5 over 4, adding this coefficient times the integral of e to the x sine 2x dx equals negative e to the x cosine 2x over 2 plus e to the x sine 2x over 4. All right. The original problem asks us for the integral of e to the x sine 2x dx. So we need to get rid of this 5 over 4 here. So the easiest way to get rid of that is to multiply by its reciprocal 4 over 5, both sides, 4 over 5. OK? On the left side, we'll end up with the original integral we were to evaluate, which is integral of e to the x sine 2x dx. And on the right side, we can distribute this 4 fifth to both terms. If we distribute 4 fifth to this, the 2 will go into the 4 2 times. So we have negative 2 e to the x cosine 2x over 5. And when we distribute 4 fifth to the last term, we have plus e to the x sine 2x over 5 because the 4 and that 4 cancels out. Okay? And then we just simply add the C for the constant. And there goes your final answer for the indefinite integral of e to the x sine 2x dx. Alright? So that's that. But thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Uh, Feel free to subscribe to my channel for updates to other cool clips such as this. And please post a comment to let me know what you think about this presentation. More clips can be found on mathcodeserve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day.